This model has been commissioned by Heavy Transport Models of Germany and it comes in a standard WSI branded box which is factory sealed. This is a limited edition model and it comes in the colours of Keybag, the Swiss construction company. There's no instructions with the model which is a pity because previous versions of it did have instructions. But although there are a number of parts it's not too difficult to work out where they go. There were a couple of issues out of the box. On the 5 axle module the wrong length tie bar had been installed. So the wheels were a little bit out of alignment but that could be corrected by disconnecting the tie bar. There was another assembly problem affecting the gooseneck. And on the review model the gooseneck couldn't be set at the right angle so that all of the wheels on the interdolly could be grounded. This is a bit of a strange problem because again it looks like the wrong length components have been used. And in this case the pistons and the jackets were too long so that the support couldn't be closed up fully. Before we try to fix that we'll just do a check by disconnecting the pistons from the jackets. And if we do that we see the mechanism closes up properly and the interdolly becomes properly grounded. We want the model to display properly and we don't want to send it back so it's time to do a little bit of surgery to try and fix the issue. We'll start by using a sharp knife just to cut off the ends of the cylinder jackets. And the next thing to do is to remove the ends of the metal pistons. For that we'll use a big pair of pliers and carefully cut off the ends of each of the pistons. We then reassemble the rams to fix the problem. It's annoying and shouldn't happen but at least it's a relatively easy fix. There are a couple of bits of assembly on the big Mercedes tractor. There's a cover plate which goes over the front hitch and then you can pin it into position with a small steel pin. At the other end of the tractor there's another couple of parts to be fitted into the towing hitch. Assembly of the trailer is fairly straightforward. There's a spine beam which attaches to the front of the 5 axle module and that's secured in position with a steel pin. It was a little bit of a tight fit but a screwdriver was used to push the pin fully home. The front assembly is also straightforward with the gooseneck fixing into the 3 axle module. And as we've now corrected the problem with the rams on the review model, it all poses properly when the gooseneck is pinned to the fifth wheel. The final connection to make is just to hook over the spine beam onto the rear of the interdolly. All that remains is to tuck in the loose hydraulic cables and then add the warning boards and the closing plate to the end of the 5 axle module. And after that there are a couple of warning boards to attach to the gooseneck. The tractor is all wheel drive and the complex transmission is fully modelled and there are different tyre types on the front and rear axles. There's no number plate on the vehicle which is a bit of a surprise but the big Actros cab is modelled well. Behind the cab there's a detailed equipment tower and it's all modelled in plastic. Around the fifth wheel there's plenty of diamond plated anti-slip surfacing. Both modules have a heavy structure underneath and there are detailed axle assemblies. The interdolly is very detailed with highlighted bolt heads on the top surface and there are some very sharp small graphics too. There's also excellent detailing at the rear end of the trailer. There's some more fine detailing on the sides of the gooseneck with the yellow reflective stripe and small graphics. And there are highlighted tie down loops and replica timbers on the spine beam. The big 8 wheel drive Actros rolls well in a straight line on the Cranes etc test track. And looking underneath the rear wheels are fixed on two common axles and spin easily. And at the front the link steering works reasonably well but the angle of movement is not huge. Still it will gently steer around a curve. Tilting the cab works fine because it poses in a tilted position. And there's an engine block bearing the name Mercedes Benz underneath. Now we'll move on and take a look at the two module units. The free axle rolls along very well but surprisingly doesn't have working suspension. Whereas the five axle module also rolls well and it is fully sprung. This is a bit strange because when the Notaboom Redline version of the model was reviewed, the free axle module did have working suspension. The steering is fully linked throughout the module but some of the connections have a degree of looseness in them. But you can set the parallel steering as intended. The 5 axle module has nice working suspension on each wheel set. And as the module goes at the back of the trailer the steering is proportional. So the rear wheels steer more than those at the front. And that allows a nice steering angle to be obtained. 
There are some different configuration options available on the model and one of them is to add deck extenders to the spine beam. There are plastic support beams which get pushed out and here we're using a screwdriver. And once you've annoyed yourself trying to get them to exactly the right length, you can put on the deck boards. With that the trailer is fully configured for length and width. It is a long vehicle so let's put the tape on it and from end to end it measures about 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Of course it looks most impressive with a big load on. Another configuration is that by using a special clip you can raise the inter dolly up and this would be used for when the trailer is travelling empty. It means that the tyres on the inter dolly don't get worn out for no purpose. Another configuration possibility for the model is to take out the inter dolly completely. Then you can attach the deck directly to the gooseneck. So this would be used when the load to be carried isn't so heavy. Once the connection has been made there's a little bit of tidying up to do with the hoses and cables. And they get tucked in as neatly as possible. So here's the shorter configuration with a lighter load to be carried. This is an impressive heavy haulage truck and it looks good in the colours of Keybag. The details and features were good although the build quality on the review model was disappointing. It loses marks for that but assuming it's a one-off, a well-made version of the model is highly recommended. Music